is a relative paucity of knowledge about urban poverty in developing countries, specifically about their current conditions and how these conditions, the social statuses, and the home and land ownership progress over time. This topic is especially difficult and underexplored in India because not even the government has record of these slum locations or a transparent policy about how they handle them. Fast connections studying the real slums of Bangalore, Patna, and Jaipur focus on giving insight into these areas. We seek to give voices to the individuals and families living in these slums so that policy can be better delivered. One of the things that our project has looked at is tenure security. Four years ago, the Bangalore government responsible for infrastructure evicted over 5,000 slum residents um, from their homes in an area called Koramangala, leaving thousands of women and children homeless. Evictions happen in unofficial settlements, and we are curious to find out how secure these slum residents feel about their tenure. Based on responses from surveys administered in the past two years, you can see that about 20% of respondents feel very insecure about their tenure, about 40% feel somewhat insecure, and only less than half feel at least somewhat secure. So why do some slum residents feel more secure than others? Finding out answers to this question may help us figure out what can be done to improve tenure security in slums in Bangalore. So we found that there are two mainly main things that affect tenure security in slums in Bangalore, the legal status of a slum and whether an individual has private ownership. We found that people who believe that their slum is notified, or in other words, officially recognized as a slum by the Bangalore government, actually feel more secure about their tenure. Most interestingly, people who believe that they have private ownership actually feel less secure. This is interesting because it seems like tenure security is not derived from a sense of private title, which is, first of all, hard to defend against encroachments due to the limited resources that slum residents had access to. It is also hard to navigate, navigate because there's just so many different types of property ownership documents that can be used to prove private title. So one thing that I looked at during my field research over the past summer in Bangalore was the range of documents that prove private title that exist in slums in Bangalore. There are close to 20 and they all prove different levels of ownership. Some confer complete title while others merely serve identification purposes. So figuring out the stories behind these proper property documents may allow us to get a bit better picture and get a better understanding of what tenure security means in Bangalore. India is a hub of economic dynamism. Yet with this boom comes a widening wealth gap where the rich are getting wealthier and the poor are left further and further behind. I researched the likelihood of climbing the social ladder based off of household and neighborhood characteristics. My research uses an asset-based poverty metric. Think back in your own life to 10 years ago in 2007. Do you remember exactly how much each of the members of your family earned? The answer is probably not very accurately. However, you might remember the things that you had, your new bedroom furniture, or perhaps the cell phone that you had at the time. Households pinpointed up to what item on this ranked list of assets they could afford. And I've calculated the, the, the difference between what they could afford 10 years ago versus today. My research has drawn me to a few conclusions on what affects social mobility, and this is the robustness of social capital. Social capital can be divided into two clusters, one of which being social network. How much are the identity characteristics of those households around you, such as religion, caste, and mother tongue, similar to other households who will help you during downward falls or difficult times? The other significant cluster is um, or a community organization and engagement. If a neighborhood is engaged and organized, 
the burden of the individual to improve their quality of life is lessened. So the data that our team has gathered over the past couple of years is extremely rich and contains many interesting answers to questions regarding urban poverty. And at this point, we're very excited to have been part of this project and we would like to thank all the members of our team for making this project happen. Thank you very much.